we've learned that we can scale the times uh, while not affecting the solution set on one of these new Olympic scheduling problems. So let's go down to the next part. Reduction to distinct times. Give a correct linear time reduction from the new Olympic scheduling problem in which times are not necessarily distinct to the Olympic scheduling problem in which all times are distinct. You may assume the theorem from the previous part is true and that such a scaling takes linear time. So if this were an exam and we hadn't solved the previous part, that's okay. We get to just assume that the stuff in the previous section is true and that our scaling takes linear time. All right, so let's just imagine that we've got, actually, I'm, I'm going to go back up and just remind myself of what that little instance looked like. So this little instance over here, it's kind of handy. It's, it's got overlapping times. So I had um, 1, 3, 2, 5, 5, 7. Um, let's rewrite that. So I've got um, from time 1 to 3, from time... 2 to 5, and from time 5 to 7, and this one had value 1, 4, and 2. And somehow I'm going to do a reduction so that th this is an instance of the new problem. So this is an instance of new Olympic scheduling problem. And somehow I'm going to reduce that to an instance of the old Olympic scheduling problem. And then when I'm done, I'll get a solution, and I'll convert the solution back into a solution to the original problem. Now let's go ahead and sketch that out. So I'm going to solve, and then I'm going to convert solution back. Okay, and that will effectively do this, right? So the reduction is a way of filling in this arrow by going down, across, and back up again. Now, it's possible that I will, I will call on this solution multiple times, but the normal case is that we call on it once. So let's imagine we're going to do it once. How does this help us? If, if we scale, uh, these two things still overlap. Um, let's see, so there's, there's one, let's just put our timeline down here, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, what I'm thinking about is we could just shove this over a little bit. Uh, if, if we could kind of jitter all of the points by just a little bit, shove the, the starting point over or the finish point back just a bit, we would be okay because they wouldn't overlap anymore, uh, but we'd still be preserving any relationships that we had before. Um, so maybe um, maybe we can make room. Actually, you know, if we think of it visually, we could we could put like half tick marks on here. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to take this point and move it over to this half tick mark right here, and uh, and take this point and move it over to this half tick mark and take this point and move it over to this half tick mark. But the one we really care about in this particular instance is right here because then we these two would not overlap. Uh, and we can't go to a half tick mark because we need to stick with integers, but we can go to a half tick mark if the half tick marks are integers. And if we scale up by a factor of two, then they will be. So what if we make this, so we'll just have the new problem down here, and instead of one to three, this is two to six, and this is four to 10, and this is 10 to 14. And then what we do is we just cross this off and redo it at 11, cross this off and redo it at 5, cross this off and redo it at 3. And if you're wondering why I moved all those start times when I only really need to move this one, it's because I'm not solving this particular instance, really. I'm making a reduction that'll solve all instances, and I don't want my reduction to have to search through to see which times are overlapping. It's easier just to move all the start times and we'll be guaranteed that there's no start time overlapping a finish time at that point. 
Now, it doesn't ask us to prove correctness of our reduction, but let's just think here. Will this, will this preserve all the conflicts? And we want two events to conflict in the new instance, if and only if they conflicted in the old one. And obviously it preserves the values. Since it does those two things, if we get a solution, then our conversion could really be sort of the identity function, right? We would get the solution down here, solution down here, and we'd produce the same solution up here. Um, now, does this preserve conflicts? If two events conflicted up here, what does that look like? That looks like, again, the start time of i is before the finish time of j, and the start time of j uh, is before the finish time of i. Did I do that right? Start time of i is before the finish time of j, and the finish time of i is after the start time of j. Yeah. That sounds right. That's in, in the new problem. In the old problem, we had just said that the start time of i, and let's say start time of i prime, we just said less than or equal to. And, sorry, less than or equal to. So we had just said less than or equal to before. And is this OK? Does this imply that? because that's what we really need. We want exactly the same conflicts. And in fact, we really want an if and only if, so that when this isn't true, then that also isn't true. So this right here, this start time, si prime, is this start time times 2 plus 1. So it's 2 si plus 1. And this finish time here, fj prime, that is just, clear this out here, a little space. That is just 2 times fj. So we've got 2 si plus 1 and 2 times fj. If si is less than fj and they're integers, we can actually convert that into uh, si plus 1 is less than or equal to fj, right? So now we can double this and get uh, 2 si plus 2 is less than or equal to 2fj. And so if this is true, 2si plus 1 is less than that. So clearly this is less than or equal to that. So that establishes this piece. The math on this will be exactly the same. So that's a, that's a big check mark for me. I like this reduction. I think we're set to use it. So I'm just going to mark this all scratch work. Mark that as off to the side. And now what does our reduction look like? Uh, given events, given uh, n events, uh, each of the form si, fi, vi, produce n events of the form 2si plus 1, 2fj. Uh, sorry, I was going to scale. I guess it doesn't really matter if I scale the values by, by 2, but it's a little silly to do, and it obscures what we're actually trying to do, so I won't bother with that. OK, so this is uh, part 1 of our reduction. Part 2 is, given a solution, to the modified instance S, a set of events, produce the same set S as a solution to the original. And I put same in scare quotes here. Um, I'm just going to explain why I did that quick. So scaled back to the original instance. So you know, if the events are numbered and S is uh, a set of the numbers of the events that we're including, then I really just get to use S straight out. 
if we we actually if if s is a set of these things right here then i need to take each start time subtract one and divide by two i need to take each finish time and divide by two and i'll get a solution to the original but it, it is the corresponding events and that should do it well can we do this in linear time um given n events of the form blah 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 produce n events oh, sure we just scan through the events and we do this change each time that's that's easy these are clearly all constant time changes there's n events we change all n of them we feed it into our uh, solver for the reduce problem and basically we're just keeping s the same but in the worst case if we have to go through s and subtract one from each start time and divide it by two divide the finish times by two still that just takes linear time so this is good now, there is an ungraded challenge here. I'm not going to solve the ungraded challenge with a video, but I will post a sample solution to that.